I was arrested probably six, seven times before my parents ever found out about my first arrest. And I would just go through it and I wouldn't come home and I would just, you know, holding cells and we'd just bond out and deal with it. As kids, there wasn't too much repercussion. I was never doing anything that was like that insane, but graffiti to them was that insane. So, you know, a fill-in is the same as a whole side of a blockbuster building or something, you know, so it, we were constantly in trouble. I never saw crazy like repercussion from it. Um, but I had, I, I was a career criminal of sort for, for a long time. I mean, misdemeanor world, but always in trouble with graffiti, but always in trouble with graffiti for either like possession or lurking or trespassing or criminal mischief. I had minimal to know, like, you know, uh, damage to property, uh, none of that. I wasn't getting any of those because I was always coming back for photos. It was always, you know, getting pulled over a couple blocks away where they knew what was up, but they couldn't get us on shit. And it was, um, you know, it, it's give and take. I mean, you got to think, uh, you know, people who care about you and stuff at that time period probably just saw all the shootings and all the crazy stuff that's happening and you're out there painting on walls. Yeah. You're going to think someone's going to come outside of their building and shoot you in the face. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what I would think. Yeah. I never really grew up too worried about like property owners. Uh, it just wasn't a thing. It's, it's dudes on the street, man. It's just, it's peers. That's, that's what was scary. Climbing somebody's, you know, home and being on their roof and jumping to their neighbor's roof. And like, you know, I never really, I don't think I ever thought of someone coming out with a gun or something. That was never a concern. We got plenty of haze. We got chased off of shit. We've been surrounded by the police. You know, we've, we've gone through it, but no, I was, I was afraid of, I don't know if afraid is the word. I was on guard or on alert getting to the spot. Then once I'm in the spot, now I'm a hundred percent graffiti focused. How do I get over? How do I get up? How do I get it done? And how do I get over on this? Um, I wasn't ever really like thinking about my safety other than falling or, mm -hmm. you know, coming through a roof or some shit that was way more at the forefront. Um, we, as kids, my eight, like we grew up just either got along with people or you didn't. And if you didn't, you know, figure it out. Um, Chicago's not a place where you have to have like get a raspy throat from swearing at each other and calling each other pussy for, you know, for an hour across the street from you shoot each other. You know, it's, it's, it's a grimy city. So you pretty much stay quiet and, and do your thing. And I understand the power of eye contact and a nod. And like, I always knew if I wasn't inter interfering with motherfuckers money, I probably didn't have anything to worry about. So I just kept doing me and more times than not, if dudes were like, the fuck you doing over here? What you, what do you want? I'd be like, man, I'm on some whole other shit. Like my business does not, you don't want to be a part of this. Like, let me just keep doing me. Did you ever consider joining a gang or anything like that or ever come no, close to thinking never, that was I, what you wanted? No. Um, I thought it was kind of stupid. Uh, you know, most of the gangbangers I saw had like the shags and like crazy face tattoos and like just looked ridiculous. And I liked, I definitely was like super hooked on like the big flashy tribal gear shirts with fucking pieces on it. And I, I was a hip hop kid, man. Like tight book back and, and, head <laughs> and like fucking North face jackets. And shit. Like yeah, I yeah. was, I was a hip hop kid. And then, and then, uh, dude, I met Attic in San Francisco and he was the most clean cut. Just, I, you would never think this dude does graffiti ever. And it blew my mind. And I changed my whole approach, like literally after seeing this dude and just like watching how he did what he did. I was like, oh man, there's no more like, baggy shit. There's no more graph t-shirts. There's, you know, I'm getting myself a clean pair of shoes. I'm always going to be clean cut. I, you are not going to look at me and be like, Oh, you know, you'll see the little hip hop bounce, you know, when I'm not <laughs> on anything. And like, I know I could be on my bullshit, but if I'm, if I'm out to anything, I am clean cut white kid. And, and I am not a part of this shit. And to 2010, I got caught uh, painting trains with some guys in Chicago. And uh, so I was, I was, you know, by the balls in court for that. And then two months later, I caught, I caught a drug charge that fucking sucked. And I spent, I spent so much time fighting that. And I was in so much legal trouble. Like I violated the subway charge. So that judge 
then ordered like zero graffiti. I can't be in possession of spray paint. Like I can't fuck around when my drug uh, judge found out that I was already dealing with shit. She knew I was a problem and they had then pulled my records and saw like how much I flew and traveled and like was constantly moving around. So they like locked me to Cook County. I was like not able to leave the state or not able to leave the county at first, uh, almost a full year before they let me just stay in the state. Uh, my sister went downstate to school. So I used that to be like, Yo, you're not letting me see family at this point. I need to be able to like travel in the state. And uh, I got myself a couple permission walls. I knew that I couldn't get in any fucking trouble. And I knew the permission wall was probably safe enough to still be able to use spray paint. And, you know, so I still gambled with that because legally or, you know, in the courtroom, I was not supposed to be anywhere near this shit. And I was, I painted over myself, you know, daily, every day, every weekend, over and over and over because I was, I was stir crazy. I was bombing so hard at the time and just completely stepped on the brakes. I was pushing trains. I was, I was traveling. I was on it. And, and my world, everything that was, you know, a hundred miles an hour at the time was out the window. And so I had to just, I was like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to fucking burn all you guys. Like this, I'm just going to get dope at this and past time. You know, I thought it'd be a, a year, a couple years that I was dealing with where I, I went seven years in that, through that period of like, not really being able to like, be in any type of trouble. So I was very cautious. I started traveling again through it and like, still being a deviant, but just really started to pick and choose what was worth, you know, before it was like, anything goes, let's, you know, who cares? Let's punch this car window. As, as once that happened, like it was every step had to be thought about.